guys are getting ready to start the Bear Palooza concert. You guys see the concert, uh, the little show last night, the little teaser, what's going on? Yeah. This is gonna be more original music, correct? It's gonna be original music. And uh, and it's gonna be great. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. In 2002, hidden away within the streets of the West Village was a bar called Finally Fred's, where musician Chris Landhair was promoting a monthly gay music night that would end up giving one man a chance to try something new and forever change the face of the bear community. We're at Finally Fred's in the West Village for an event called Bear Palooza, which is a concert of music given by bears. Now, bears in the gay vernacular are rather cherubic men with prodigious hair, sort of big teddy bears. And tonight, they're going to be giving a concert of music that is uniquely theirs. Oh, where are we? We found it. It's now called know, right? Inch Wine. Wine. And it used to be Finally Fred's. Finally Fred's. Which I always thought was really funny because your name is Freddie, and right. how did you do that? People just... thought it was my bar. Oh. And I was like, no, it's not my bar. Right. It just happens to be called Finally Friends. Oh. So this is the place where the very first ever Bear Palooza took place right here. It was called Finally Freds. And, and I was the very first drag queen hostess of Bear Palooza. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember the thing that I was so excited about with Bear Palooza because at the time I was doing glamour drag. And I remember it for Bear Palooza, the first thing I said was, Yay, I don't have to shave my back. Oh my God. <laughs> I was wearing a fishnet um, jumpsuit and my tits and everything underneath, but yeah. nothing else. Right. Welcome to Barrel Palooza! We're doing this one more time. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Barrel Palooza. Yes, indeed. Self described gender warrior Yolanda was the Bear Palooza mistress of ceremonies. I was born in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, came out of the closet in the fourth grade. It was not a pretty sight. I was very, very aware of who I was, so. As you can imagine, it was not... My hometown, Muscle Shoals, was the kind of place where the KKK was listed in the phone book under a social organization. <laughs> I was really excited that they asked me, a big old genderqueer drag queen, to be a part of it because, actually, as a hairy kind of big furry guy without drag, I feel very, very close to the, the bear community. So it was really, it was very exciting for me to be able to do a show in drag where I didn't have to shave my back. Ah, so. I, <laughs> I think Chris Landhair was doing a, a land shark here yes. every yes. month. Yes. And he had to go to Australia to wrestle. And he said, Freddie, yes. you want to take over this night for me? And I'm like, my own night? I get to do a concert on my own night? And I was like, oh, I have all these bear identify musicians yeah. who can come and play and I really thought it'll just be this one time. Right. And then tell them about and these now, stairs. But, <laughs> yes, but the thing that I want to say to that was that that was the first bear concert right. ever. Right. Like ever. I mean, you know, there were guys that we you would call bears now that right. used to we hang out at, yeah, right. or yeah. that used to hang out down at the dugout right. and played music and everything, but this is the first official bear concert ever, and now look what has happened with 
an explosion of bear music, bear movies, bear culture, bear magazines. Right, right. There was none of that in no. 2002. In 2002, when I started story. this, the other thing that was going on was bear radio oh, okay. online. Right. That's where I got a lot of my artists from. And we'll be bear music. Greg right. Hudson was doing the compilations. <laughs> right. So I feel like there was these three things that kind of created together. Like you know, Holy Trinity or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's amazing. And Bear Palooza was wonderful. Right. It certainly it, it looks the same but different, right? Like yeah. I can remember coming here and like loading in all the equipment and we yeah. were so excited. We couldn't find a place to park around here. And the night was packed, and it was so packed that people were standing all the way up the stairs, right. listening to the music, and it was it just... Fit everybody out. I know. It was incredible. We had to turn people away. It was incredible. It was amazing. We yeah. had... Um, who else was there? Oh, God. Uh, Max Christopher. Max Christopher. This was the very first Bear Palooza, but already there are plans for more festivals in New York and other cities. The essence of Bear Palooza was summed up very nicely by recording artist Max Christopher. How would you define the spirit of Bear Palooza, and how do you fit into that spirit? Gina, that's a tough question. I think Bear Palooza is kind of, you know, instead of what we see in music a lot is a lot of imagery, you know, that's put there for sort of eye candy. You know, why not let it just be about the music? Uh, why not? Martin Swinger. Martin Swinger. But it ain't it grand to have a bear so big and fat that when you go to hug him, you don't know where you're at? You to learn what characterizes the quintessential bear, look no further than Martin Swinger. A charismatic and spirited member of the bear community, Martin won many fans from a previous appearance on Under the Pink Carpet. Martin has come all the way down here from Maine to be here at the Bear Palooza. Okay, and this is, of course, his fur trim CD, Martin Swinger Bare Naked, which we've all seen before. No, actually, the guy that we don't know what happened to him before. Midnight Circus. Midnight Circus. I love Midnight Circus. Yeah, they were Michael great. Todd Michael Todd. Wait a minute. What are these guys doing here? One of the reasons bears are called bears is because they're sort of woodsy and Paul Bunyan-esque. Michael Todd, lead vocalist for Midnight Circus, somehow doesn't fit that mold. Lucius Aloysius. Johnson, Frederick Jones, so out of his bed close to noon. His shirt was torn and tattered, oh, his pants were hanging loose, and with untied laces in his shoes. The reason why we were picked for this show was um, Freddie Freeman had come and see one of our performances and liked us and was so overtaken by our performance that they asked us to come down and perform. I'm always uh, looking for different kinds of gay things and events to be a part of. I think we add a little bit of spa splash of color and life to, you know, different stages. It's a lot oh, very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Earning the Joy. Earning the Joy was here. Oh, we have... I won't be deceived. Ernie LaJoy has a loyal following among the bear population, and it's easy to see why. Cover boy Handsome and Urban Rugged, Ernie is a veritable Viking among bears, and he sometimes performs in the nude. I actually come from a theater background, and most of my music is, is um, very theater-driven and cabaret-driven. I loved your song called You Stink. <laughs> you Stink. All right, now you preface that song by saying that one of the problems with bears is a lot of them smell. Is that true? Um, no, I was joking. Is that song based on anyone that you'd met or had an experience with? Yes, but I won't mention who. <laughs> In addition to having impressive vocal capabilities, Artist Freddie Freeman was the Bear Palooza event organizer. We asked him why some of the performers didn't quite fit the bear mold. What's the deal with that? With the people who don't really even look like bears or would even define themselves as bears being here tonight? Well, the thing about that is that I define a bear as mostly an attitude. The bear community is about celebrating diversity of, of looks and diversity of what we consider masculine beauty. And the bear community has been about saying, wait a minute, there's like all the rest of us who don't look like models, who celebrate a different kind of what it means to be a gay man. 
So that doesn't necessarily mean they have to like prescribe to a certain look because that would be the antithesis of what the bear community is about. That would be kind of counter to your basic philosophy. Right. At Finally Fred's in New York with Under the Pink Carpet. This is Tony Sawicki reporting from Bearpalooza. Bearpalooza was far from being a one-time only affair. In the next two years, Bearpalooza would play at a legendary club in the East Village, add dozens of new performers, and take its first steps outside of New York City to become more than just an annual event. From the time I started planning Bearapalooza, I always thought that that first show would be a one-time thing, that I'd have some fun making music with my bear friends, and that would be it. But I was pleasantly surprised that the bear community really seemed to embrace it. So immediately I started thinking, what can I do to make this bigger next year? While Yolanda was doing some nights at a club called CB's Gallery, which was a part of the famous CBGB's club, it was next door and downstairs, and we got Bearapalooza booked in there the following year. This time we teamed up with the New York Metro Bears who were having a bear run that year called the Big Apple Bear Fest. The first year was mainly acoustic acts, but this time we decided to have full bands. We also booked a lot more artists this year, did a lot more promotion, and made a much bigger deal out of the show. We had some of the performers from the first year return, like myself, Max Christopher, Yolanda, and Martin Swinger. But we also had some new people. Uh, one of our new guys came all the way from Canada. His name is Andy Northrup, and he is a fantastic singer-songwriter who has since become a really big, important part of the Barapalooza family. Another interesting new addition was Money in Both Pockets, a traditional Celtic band fronted by Jay Duckworth, who was at the time Mr. Metro Bear. Well, Jay came in with his band, looking woofy in his kilt, and rocked the house. We were happy to have that show hosted by local queer radio personality Pedro Angel Serrano, and Under the Pink Carpet's Miss Clover Honey. Max Christopher and I were friends with some of the guys from the Philly Bear Club, the Liberty Bears, and we used to go over to Philly once in a while for some of their bar nights, and I think we played a couple shows over there. So in May of 2004, the Liberty Bears asked me if I would bring Bearapalooza to Philly as part of their run called Bears on Liberty Weekend. This is the first time that I'd had any concept of Bearapalooza being anything other than an annual show in New York. So this really opened the door to me thinking about it in a different way. And that was a really memorable show. The Liberty Bears had a nautical theme that year, so they decked out the stage of the bike stop like a pirate ship. They had an ocean backdrop and even a ship's wheel right on the stage. I dressed like a pirate, and Yolanda wore a crazy getup of a grass skirt with like a coconut bra. And I remember getting that whole outfit with her at a thrift store in Brooklyn for like 15 bucks. That was a really memorable show. My band did a set, Yolanda's band, Max's band played, and we were joined by the Bootlickers for the first time, a local Philly band. Also that year, through Bear Radio, I connected with a singer-songwriter from Nashville named Michael West. I was really impressed with Michael's work, and I really wanted to work with him, and we worked on getting him to a Bearpalooza in New York, but in the meantime, Michael suggested that maybe we bring Bearpalooza down to Nashville for the Music City Bears Bear Jam. At the time, it just so happened that I was really getting into the countryside of my musical taste, so I was really thrilled with the idea of bringing Bearapalooza to Nashville. Another really big thing happened to me that year. I had been talking online to a guy in Tupelo, Mississippi, and we had developed an online relationship and gotten really close on the phone and online, and we decided that we wanted to meet. So he said, if you're doing this thing in Nashville, I'm going to drive up and meet you. So two really big things happened that year. I brought Bearapalooza to Nashville for the first time, and I started a new relationship. The show was amazing. Michael West did an amazing job of helping to coordinate everything, and he also got some local guys from Nashville to play. I got to hear him perform for the first time, which was amazing. Andy came down from Canada. Max came from New York. Um, I did a set. And we had a newcomer to Bearapalooza. Tommy Johns came all the way from Seattle, Washington, and over the years he's become such an integral part of Bearapalooza, and I'm so glad that he joined us. You know, that show in Nashville was the start of so many things. It began a relationship between myself and Nashville that would eventually see me move there. Michael became a huge part of my life and Bearapalooza, and that was the beginning of my relationship with Jay. My name is Jay Freeman, and... I am the husband of Freddie Freeman. We have the same last name, totally by accident. 
Um, I am mostly the graphic designer of Bear Palooza, um, and I also am a percussionist and I sing backup. And I got involved with Bear Palooza when I about when I got involved with Freddie, which was in 2004. And 2004 Nashville Bear Palooza was my first Bear Palooza, and also the same weekend that I met my husband for the first time in person in Nashville. And my first Barapalooza in Nashville, it was just, it was such an emotional experience for me. I was crying, I was, I was meeting the musicians afterwards and bawling, and it just was so magical, just so magical. The Nashville event had a really special moment in it that I'll never forget. Earlier, before we met, I'd been talking to Jay about how I went to an acupuncturist, and the acupuncturist told me, you have too much fire, not enough water to put out fire. And Jay was telling me, well, I'm always drinking water, so it's like you're fire and I'm water. So I started thinking about what happens when fire and water come together and how they can create steam and how that can run things. So I wrote a song called Steam, and I surprised Jay by performing it for him at the show. And there was not a dry eye in the house, and it was a really great way for us to bond and it became our song, and we are using it in our wedding. I also remember how much fun it was just going around Nashville with Andy and Tommy and taking pictures at the Grand Old Opry and things like that. And I don't know why now, but I was so enthralled with things like Waffle House and getting biscuits and gravy because it was so exotic to me because I was from New York City. But that was a lot of fun, just uh, soaking up some country culture and enjoying Nashville together. So later that year, we also did our annual show in New York at The Cutting Room. Um, Jay came up from Tupelo to be a part of that and be with me in New York, so that was nice. And we had full bands again this time, so Tommy played with a band and got to show us what an amazing electric guitarist he is. One of the first memories that I have is performing in New York City. And uh, we did a show at The Cutting Room, and I was invited to perform there. It was the first time I ever got to perform some of my songs live with a band in front of a live audience and it was pretty exciting. Went to New York, stayed at Max's place, uh, Max Christopher, and we went around to some rehearsal studios and rehearsed some of my music and and uh, with one of his band members who also backed me up and uh, one of the rehearsal studios that we went to was uh, one that the New York Dolls were using for their current tour too. So. That was pretty exciting to be using the same studio as them. Max played with a band that he called Circus Maximus, and the bootlickers came from Philly, and Yolanda played with the Plastic Family, and Martin Swinger did one of the best sets I've ever seen from him. And we also had a newcomer for that show. He's somebody that I'd heard on Bear Radio, and I really loved his music. To me, it was very Beatlesque, folky pop, and I just really wanted to work with him, so I booked him. His name was Kendall, and he came from Buffalo, New York. Well, he got to my apartment in Brooklyn, and I was ready to back him up on some of the songs I'd heard on Bear Radio, and he holds up this uh, CD, and he says, this is what I'm doing now. It's more like a rap kind of thing. And it says plain white rapper, and it's him looking sexy in his briefs on the cover. And so he showed me this stuff, and it was really good, but it was very different. It was funny. It was uh, stuff like the booty song and hot drunk guys. And I realized immediately that Kendall is very provocative. He changes his skin all the time. He's always thinking and pushing forward, and he's many, many things. And one of those things is a comedian and a performance artist. My music was on Bear Radio, and I was still doing drag, and Freddie got a hold of me and asked me if I wanted to play this thing called Bear Palooza in New York. And all I heard was like, New York. And I was like, yeah, I'm there. That's cool. Like, Bear or whatever. <laughs> but, um, so I played it. And uh, the, the music that Freddie had heard of mine was like more singer, songwriter, you know, serious, serious stuff. And when I got there, <laughs> I had just gotten done like, um, kind of like switching around my idea of what I wanted to do live, and I was doing this crazy, you know, rap fun, you know, blah, sexual, like, you know, comedy stuff, and he wasn't expecting that at all. You know, I met Freddie and um, all the other cool musicians, and it was just, 
awesome, like Martin Swinger and, you know, all those people. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Yolanda, you know, Roger Mapes, a bunch of other people. It was great. It was absolutely amazing. It blew me away, and it made me feel like, wait a second, I have an audience here. Like, I have people that maybe want, are interested in seeing me, and I was just getting out, like I said, I was, I was still doing drag, you know, at the time when he asked me, so it was weird, like, my image was kind of in between, you know, I, mean? I was growing back my eyebrows and, you know, gaining a little weight and working out and just, you know, changing the way I looked a little bit, and I, I wasn't fully comfortable in my skin yet as a bear, so I have to say that, like, Playing Bear Palooza for me, like really, not only did it make me feel like there was a, an audience for my music, but it made me feel like um, more comfortable, you know, just in general with um, being who I was. It, it made a huge difference for me. <laughs> it didn't just make a difference, it changed everything. It changed the game for me because um, I had a platform now, you know, I had an audience, or at least I thought I did. And I asked other people, do you think that I can play other, you know, bear runs and stuff? And they were like, no, they don't have bear performers at bear runs and stuff like that. But, you know, I knew that, you know, Freddie was going to continue doing Bear Palooza, And so I thought, well, I'm going to continue doing this too. And I started booking things myself and continued to play with Bear Palooza, And, you know, that's where I am today. It's what, like nine years later or something. And it's just been such a positive thing for me. That show was also memorably hosted by the famous New York drag king named Murray Hill. Murray was really hilarious with all the one-liners in between the sets. The show was also promoted and recorded by OutQ on Sirius Satellite Radio. So one of the highlights of that weekend was that we got to go and appear on a radio show at the Sirius Studios live. It was Jeremy Hovey's show called um, Last Call, I believe. And I'll never forget, especially Tommy, like Tommy was so beside himself that we were going, getting to go in there and put the headphones on and just have that radio experience and feel like rock stars for a little while. And Tommy still to this day counts that as his most memorable experience with Barapalooza. So that was pretty awesome. We went up to Sirius Satellite Radio and we were interviewed live on the air by Jeremy Hobies for Sirius Out Q. So that was a pretty, pretty exciting time. Um, we went up there for the interview and uh, it was a live interview so that was a lot of fun that was a great memory uh, going to uh, Sirius Satellite Radio and performing in New York City I felt like a rock star so that was I am fun. Jeremy Hobies your host and DJ here for Last Call on Sirius LQ 149 this hour we've got uh, from the upcoming Barapalooza event I've got uh, Freddie Freeman I am back. And I've got uh, Jay Freeman. We've got Tommy Johns. Hello. Uh, yeah, and then we've got Kendall. What's up? And we've got Toshio Mana. So we got all these performers. If you want to call in and talk to any of them, Please. just say what's up. 866-305-6887. Call oh, yeah. request line. Call me with talk. <laughs> I, I can tell tomorrow's just going to be crazy. And we rounded out that Bear Music Weekend on Sunday with... Uh, some intimate sets at the Bear Cafe uh, over at the center. And Max and Yolanda and Tommy and I played some acoustic sets and harmonized with each other. And it was a really great way to end that wonderful weekend. Barapalooza moved south, leaving behind the New York City skyline. In the next three years, they would continue to add new artists and expand to annual bear runs in Nashville, a gay campground in Florida, and their first show on the West Coast.
In early 05, I moved with Jay to Nashville, so the home base of Barrapalooza shifted to the south. But the first thing that we did that year was on the west coast in Seattle, Washington. Tommy Johns, who was living there at the time, spearheaded an effort to get Barrapalooza out there for the Northwest Bears Spring Thaw event. So a bunch of us flew out to Seattle. We all stayed with Tommy, and some of us slept in sleeping bags on the floor, and it was a real camp out kind of atmosphere. And Tommy worked really hard to get everything together, to get the equipment together, and we put on one fantastic show at the Timberline Spirits in Seattle, Washington. That show in Seattle included Tommy, uh, Max Christopher, Yolanda, newcomer Dave Montana, Andy Northrup, and me and Mike West as the Buds. Greg Hudson of Whoopi Bear Music was there selling Bear Track CDs. Bear Tracks was important because I found a lot of artists, people like Tommy Johns, on Bear Tracks compilations, which Greg put together. What was so unique about the Bear Tracks uh, CD is that uh, it involved a wide variety of music, not just one genre style, but it had rock and roll, country, uh, dance, a little mixture of everything. And what I like about the Bear Palooza 2005 in Seattle was that was the first time I met Freddie Freeman, uh, the first time I met Tommy Johns, and the first time I met uh, Andy Northrup. And because of the Bear Palooza 2005, um, I have really made some wonderful friends. And so it's not all just about music, it's not all just about talent, it's not all just about a lot of hard work, which, it, which there is a lot of that involved, but it's about the bond and the friendship that you make with the people that are involved and the people that you meet at these events. 05 was also the beginning of four years of great shows in Nashville. And the first one was part of the Music City Bears Bear Jam. I think this was probably the the biggest Bearapalooza weekend we ever had. Um, we had 13 different performers that weekend and two shows. Our first show was at the shoot and it was a little bit more of an acoustic show uh, where we had some songwriters rounds with different people. And we also featured some more comedic sets from Yolanda and Kendall and comedian Babalu, who came all the way from California. Top, looking for uh, a little ELO, uh, NRBQ, maybe some AFI, ABC, something like that. Uh, if you want to come over, I have some HBO and CBS. Maybe you can hook up some SBC DSL. It would be really nice. <laughs> And a new person at this show was Charles K. Brown. I had met Charlie in Nashville. He and I had done some open mics and stuff together, and I really wanted to bring him into Bearapalooza. So I did it this show, and he just blew everyone away with his musicianship and the sincerity in his performance and the way his voice can break your heart. And Charlie and I connected on such a deep level musically that he and Jay and I went on for many years to perform as a trio. And it's still to this day, probably, I think my favorite way to perform is with the two of them making harmonies and just blending the way that we do. And then on Saturday, the next day, we had our big show at DeVille's with full bands. That was also the first time for some people. Um, one of the newcomers was Ron Morris. I had booked Ron for my Cunity series in New York when he was up there, and I really thought he'd be a good fit for Bearapalooza. Oh, yeah, baby. But how about this morning? How about the... My first experience with Bearapalooza um, was meeting Freddie Freeman, um, I believe, at an open mic in the city. Um, and he had recruited me to play a show called Lezzie's Trannies and Bears. I played the show, I think a few songs, and uh, had a good time. And he came and talked to me and said, you know, we're doing this, this music um, festival called Bearapalooza. And we'd love for you to, um, you know, be a part of it in some way. You know, I, I was on tour. Um, I toured, released a few albums, and any time that I could overlap with Bear Palooza, I would. And I managed to play with them in New York and in Nashville, and a couple times in Nashville. Uh, 
And it was always a good time. It always is a good time. That show was also the first time we had Jeffrey Altergod, a wonderful singer-songwriter out of Chicago. This show had some really memorable moments. One of them was Yolanda's entrance in what we call now the Kiss Outfit. This was also the first time that we got to see some of Kendall's crazy numbers like the robot and GI Barbie and the mom call and call me. Andy Northrup had some new material at the time that sounded great with a full band, and Max was amazing as always. And I'll never forget Babalu doing Billy Squire's The Stroke. Speaking of stroke, some people almost had a heat stroke. It was the middle of July, and the heat index was like a record, like 115 degrees, and the air conditioning wasn't working, and the show almost didn't even happen, because that was the start of what we started uh, calling... The annual Barapalooza curse. Well, this time what it was is that the owner of the club, Miss DeVille, did not show up to open the club as she promised in the morning. And we had to set up and get ready for a show. And we kept calling and calling and calling. And hours went by and still no Angelica, no way of getting a hold of her. Um, Bob, who was running the Bear Run, said to me on the phone, You've got 10 minutes because I'm not sending a busload of bears to a locked club. So I was in tears thinking the event was going to be canceled. Poor Dave Montana, who was drumming for everyone, was out in front of the club throwing up from the heat index. It was making him sick. And we just didn't know what we were going to do. And at the last minute, a bartender showed up and we managed to scramble and get everything going just an hour late. So it all worked out. (laughs) I was asked to do Verapalooza in Nashville. It was July, I believe, of 2005. And um, I enjoyed that one a lot more. Um, That one, I played drums for everybody, uh, just about. Um, Freddie, Yolanda, uh, Andy, Max, Christopher, um, Tommy, believe even Babalu who was the MC for that one he even did a song um, but um, it was hot as hell it was like 200 degrees in there and then I'm in the back with the drum set constantly moving and um, I remember to this day I have not played drums <laughs> since that day but um, it was great um, I loved it. it it was you know, an experience that I wouldn't have had, you know, um, with other uh, gay artists uh, had it not been because of Burpalooza. Michael West was really instrumental in putting these Nashville shows together. And in 06, he and I decided that we were going to get a reputable venue and put some money out and make sure that, you know, we didn't have people not opening the club. And we got a renowned venue in Nashville called Third and Lindsley. And we were so, so happy. We, we thought, oh, nothing could go wrong. So we go to drive to the club the morning of the show, and I'm thinking, this is going to be great. It's not going to be like last year with some drag queen not showing up to open the club. And I get there, and there's police tape around the club. So I was like, oh, no, what's happening? And I go up to Michael, And Michael, very calmly in his fashion, just says, Now, it's okay. There's nothing to worry about. But the club is not going to open today. Because there was a fire. But it's no big deal. So, (laughs) I tried not to freak out. I've tried to remain calm as well. And we proceeded to find out that there was a storm the night before. And that... There was a fire in a transformer that had fallen on the club and it had to be cleaned up and they weren't going to open. So we got on the phone 
tried to make arrangements to get equipment. And then I called up uh, Gino, who owned Blue Jeans on Church Street. And I said, Gino, do you want to have a rock show in your club? And he goes, when? And I said, right now. And Gino said, I'm getting in the shower. I'll be there in a little bit. Come on over. So we did. We put signs up trying to tell people that the show had been moved. And we moved the whole thing to a different club with borrowed equipment. And uh, we pulled it off. So once again, it worked out just fine. The show that we put on in Nashville in 2007 was probably one of the more diverse shows because we added some new things. We had a bear rapper at that one. We also had for the first time a new duo from New York City called Naked, who were really amazing. And Andy Northrup was there and Max Christopher was there. And we also had a, a punk band called Future Villain Band from California. And they were awesome and they really brought a lot of cool energy to the show. Now, so far, Bearapalooza had performed at bear runs, like in hotel ballrooms and stuff like that, and also at bars. But in 2006, I got an offer to bring Bearapalooza down to Florida to a place called the Sawmill Camping Resort. And I was really thrilled with it. It was a new opportunity, something different. We were also excited that they had a clothing optional pool and we could all do that and relax and we had a really great time getting to know the staff there all the people at the splash bar and it became a really wonderful thing that we did for like five years in a row i almost didn't make it to that show at sawmill because i was in the hospital with pneumonia and i was so determined to go to florida that when they released me that day that we were supposed to leave i said jay i don't care if i still have a fever we're going to florida and we went to florida we drove through the night we got there on Friday morning, and I was still horribly sick all day Friday. Saturday, the day of the show, somehow the fever broke, and I was great, and I had a great... Over the years, many Bearpalooza performers got their start at Sawmill. One of them is Don Harvey. Now, Don sings incredibly funny and pointed and poignant songs about gay life that are very irreverent, but very, very clever and witty and heartfelt. Sawmill was also the first time for Steve Reeder of Kenosha, Wisconsin. Steve is a lover of ACDC and KISS, and it really reflects in his music that's very electric guitar driven. And for Sean Imler, also known as Rhythma, a very good singer-songwriter. And also Eric Waldo. He was supposed to come to us as part of the group Lafro, but ended up coming by himself. He's done a lot of different stuff. He can be very comedic or very heartfelt in his writing. So Sawmill Campground has been a very, very important part of the history of Bearapalooza. 2008 would prove to be Bearapalooza's busiest year ever, starting in May with the Bearapalooza Road Trip, the music festival's first full-scale tour with stops up and down the East Coast. All aboard! Road trip! Come on, get on the bus! Oh, yeah, this is gonna be awesome! Yeah, let's go! In 2008, with Charlie's help, we rented a van, and we all piled in, and we headed out on the road for a 3,000-mile journey up and down the East Coast. You have to avoid the bugs. If you see bugs coming, you swerve right, you swerve left. You do not run into the bugs. I can't spend my whole vacation cleaning bug guts off the windshield. Thank you very much. It's nice and rainy here in Boston today, and we are just kind of touring the uh, downtown area to see what it's like, and, and there's Jay driving the van. There's Kendall. That's Kendall, right? Where is it? Right there. There, there he is. is. Mm. Hello! <laughs> Get <in>. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have to direct you? What up? Get him, get him, get him. I gotta get in. So after a really long trip from Nashville, we finally arrived at our first stop, Boston, for our show at the Alley Bar. It was refreshing for me to play uh, Bear Palooza the times I have. I immediately sensed it was more of a all-accepting environment um, that the bears tend to 
be more accepting of all different types of uh, people. It's not about physical perfection. It's not about this kind of vapid, um, you know, image conscious thing. It's it's more about um, this organic. It almost had like a family vibe to it. Every time I've played, every Bear Palooza I played, it almost seemed like this really close, tight knit group of gay men who just really were supportive of one another. And it was refreshing to be around that because you don't really see that a lot in the gay community. So we said goodbye to Boston and we all piled in the van and we headed over to Rye, New York to be a part of an event called Bear Track. In this hand, come in around the other side. Oh my, come in around the other side. Oh, good things in my way. Come in around the other side. Over the mountains. Suddenly I am lying next to you. Hold it into me. Hold it into you. So after Rye, New York and Bear Track, it was time to get back in the van and head to the Big Apple. Why are you happy? I'm so happy I could shit. <laughs> I could shit. Aww. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm coming with you. I quit my job. I'm going to be a full time musician now. Awesome. Yeah. Get on top. I'm coming to Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> Don't threaten us, Mr. Christopher. Can you fit under a seat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can, I can Actually, fit on top of somebody's lap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So once we got into the city, we did some exploring, went to Times Square, things like that. And then we got ready to put on a big show at the Eagle Bar. I'll give it up for Mr. Ernie LaJoy. Welcome to the Barapalooza Road Trip. <laughs> oh, that's why. Where people because stop being polite and start being real. Trying to help everyone yeah. and be efficient and logistic. And I'm getting different stories from different people, so I'm out of it. Okay? Do what you want. Chill out, Betty Freeman. He's crazy. Sex. Yes. Yes. Hello. <laughs> this is May 7th, I think. And we are in lovely and fascinating and interesting Baltimore. Skyline is down that way, but there's a nice tree blocking it. But this is the theater we are performing at tonight. The lovely Patterson, home of the Creative Alliance. For some reason, we're not on the marquee, but we will forgive them for that. Very quickly, if you got the lineup, we'd like to hear that. 
Yes, um, go ahead and read down the line out. Ah, we have Don, then we have Stephen, then Brady, Michael, Swin, Naked, and Kendall, and Freddie. And then we're going to try to throw in Jesse. I mean, Jesse on top of being Freddie. So what about you? I'm not going to. Why? I, I don't want to. He's not going to do it tonight because he's kind of tired. Okay. So, um, all right, cool. Thank you. And everybody, Dave and Kendall will be hosting. Um, Dave is our official host for the night, but Kendall's our official. Michael, would you introduce Dave? He's <laughs> <laughs> the yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and yes, I'm sorry. Create a Make Freddie eat something. I can't make Freddie do anything. Yeah, well, I can. Do it. Do it. Okay. Baltimore, Maryland was, I think, my favorite venue. It was a wonderful theater called The Patterson, and we had a great show there. Here we are in Washington, D.C. at Remington's on May the 8th. Uh, it's about, oh, somewhere between 8 and 9 p.m., isn't it? It's, it's about 10 minutes. Our next stop was in Washington, D.C., where we played at, of all things, a country western bar. But it was a really well-attended show, and we had a great time. It's got a flash that burns like the sun in the sky. watching a videotape of a ceremony. Very special ceremony. We being there's Sin and JC and there's Kendall and Don. Good morning guys. What is it? You ready Philly? Yeah. We're coming. Are you ready? We're gonna rape your asses. Did I say that? Yeah, what did you say that for? Is that good documentary fodder? Sure. Yes, we are on the road to Philadelphia, and I'm just filming the road. We're getting toward the end of the tour now. We got a couple of dates left. And, uh, it's been quite a journey, huh, Jay? Yeah. I'm looking for tonight to be that re-energizing night, you know. And you know, it's going to be a fantastic night. Well, last night was what last night was. <laughs> so we headed back to Philly, where we would once again play with the Liberty Bears for the Bears on Liberty weekend, which they were holding in the Lowe's Hotel Ballroom.
there's some kind of bicycle tour going on. Ready, Kendall? One, two, three, four. Bicycle, bicycle, I want to ride. Come and take your side. Walk a fat of the wind. Just come jump extra time and go. Yes. Take you on the road. Okay, we've been on the road too long. So after a very long trip up and down the East Coast, we made our final stop in Raleigh, North Carolina for a very special Mother's Day show at the show bar at The View. Uh... Another bear palooza. How are you feeling? Pretty serene, actually. That's wonderful. Serene is a good thing. There's our set. Up. It's a rainbow, and there's the city. There's the capital, and now you can't. See so the it. tour was over, and we were back home in Nashville. And then later on that year, in August, we played for the MTBA at their summer fling in Nashville. Palooza has shows all over the country. I was lucky enough to inquire about performing at a Nashville show in 2009, and Freddie and I had a long conversation about me being a part of that process, simply for the reason that I was not out at all at the time, and I know Bear Palooza celebrates the community and being proud of who you are and being out and proud. To which I am and I was proud, and every day it gets better for me. So, as a result of Bear Palooza and doing Bear Palooza since then, everything has gotten better for me somewhat on a day to day basis. I've traveled around the country as a result of this and done shows all over the place for the bear community and the gay community, not just the bear community. People think it's Bear Palooza is just for the bear community and that's not necessarily true but we do celebrate the fact that we are in the bear community and I am very happy to be part of that community. Bear Palooza has meant a lot to me because it has given me the opportunity to be myself and to share what I do which is singer songwriter guitar player with the people all over the world as a result of the internet I've been able to share what I do and the music that I perform and the music that I write with people in Germany, people in Canada, in Mexico, in Brazil. And if it hadn't been for Freddie saying, come on down to Nashville, I would have never had that opportunity. Love her. Well, here I am at Timberfell, 
This is the driveway. Came in off the highway. And this is the office. This is the event. Palooza came about for me. I, I met Freddie and some of the guys in 2008. I had seen Bear Palooza on the internet before. I remember when I found them and I thought, cool, there's these uh, bears that make music. I had always wanted to maybe get into making my own music, but I had always been a hard rock guy. All of the gay and lesbian music that I had found up until that time had been either dance music or show tune music or uh, maybe they were guy groups in drag or if they really really rocked they were definitely uh, uh, ladies so I thought you know that would be cool if I could meet these guys and see what they're doing and then one uh, one year they came to Milwaukee Pride and I almost got to see them until um, a horrendous horrendous rainstorm the annual Barapalooza curse. So I was all ready to see Barapalooza when they came to Milwaukee's Pride Festival. It was 2008, and just a couple hours before, this huge rainstorm hit the area and knocked out the whole festival. There were no shows for the rest of the night, but I ducked for cover under a canopy that was very near where Freddie Freeman and all the other Barapalooza guys were also... Uh, taking shelter from the storm. I ended up talking to him and say, you know, I I came to see you. And they were all really cool and I gave them picks for uh, the um, the music and everything that I was working on. I wasn't even near finished yet, but they were all really excited to hear what I was doing. And, the, and it turns out that since they had all traveled so far to get together and play the show, there was no way they were going to leave without uh, just getting together and doing what they came to do. So they all went up to the hotel and Freddie invited me up to his room. Oh man. So I got to sit in Freddie Freeman's hotel room and we played with each other's guitars and everybody did some songs. And so I, I got a real first-hand look. I got my own private Bear Palooza show. It's freaking awesome. And I had, I had I had gotten to play some songs too. So when we parted ways for the night, Freddie said, you know, whenever you're ready, you know, let me let me know what you're doing. And the rest is history. Ever since then, I've met up with Freddie and Jay and Kendall and done shows in Detroit and Florida, and I, I couldn't be happier that I met all the guys in Barapalooza. Everybody I've met through Barapalooza has been not only a talent, but just a sweetheart. Just love it. Barapalooza continues to expand into new venues and include new artists, and for the first time throws its own full weekend bear event. We have arrived. Buffalo's. You are at Long Fork. Welcome to Long Fork. Thank you. Buffalo's about the same distance as we are right now. Cool beans. <laughs> all, all you got left is tent sites, huh? Tent sites. Super duper. We did a lot of interesting stuff in 2009. There's not a lot of footage, but it was a really busy year. 
One of the places we went was a new campground called Long Fork in West Virginia. Uh, well, guys, what do you say we try to navigate this van down do to it. the barracks? Oh, good lord. Unfortunately, that weekend started out with Charlie driving the van into a ditch. He had to enlist some help digging it out, but the rest of the weekend went great. If you guys need any more help, give me a call. Thank you. I'll be around. Uh, yeah. That's some beautiful mud. I appreciate you. I try. More than you know. I'd even wash you if I had time. All right. <laughs> well, who's that? Hey, stranger. At Timberfell, we introduced a new Barrapalooza member who also joined us at Long Fork. His name is Patrick Arena, and he's a jazzy lounge singer. He's quite good at what he does. So later that year, we headed back down to Florida to return to Sawmill, one of our favorite places to play. This was a particularly interesting year. There was a lot of fun stuff that was captured on film. Okay, it's roughly 6 a.m. on Thursday, October 23rd. We're headed to our annual trip to Sawmill Resort. Dade City, Florida. Get that camera out of my face. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. Lawsuit, buddy. Look at all the palm trees. We are in Florida. Look at the palm trees, Kendall. Look at look at the palm trees. Look at these palm trees. You can have this one. You can have that <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, this one. Hi there. Hi. Kendall, come and meet Eric. I'm done. And Eric's parent. Hi, I'm Fred. Hey, how you hi. doing? Hi, hi. hi Kendall. Hi, hi, Kendall. Margaret. Margaret, hi. How are you? Here's some really exciting footage. We're getting in the van. That's awesome. So we're heading out to the store now. We're getting in the van we'll to, to go to the store to buy socks and blank CDs. So, Sean, how do you feel about going to the store? I'm going to the store! Is this exciting? Yeah! Do you have a laptop with you? Do you know how to burn DVDs on a laptop? Well, what program do you have? Oh, I don't even have a DVD with me. Well, <laughs> well then, you know. Is it a Mac or a... Is it a Mac or a... This is a bear weekend. It's all fucking nerds. Find, find someone to fucking do it. I'll just run it directly from Excuse me, what was that comment about? That was a good comment. I, me, myself, I love nerds. Give me a nice, yeah, chubby... I know. Nerd, oh, I'm with nerdy you, guy. The I, nerd. oh, please, I love it. So tell me, Max, um, why? Why have you come to be in the bear part of the Bear Palooza? Uh, it's part of my life now. I, I mean, how could I not come? Freddie said he needed to fill a slot, and you know, I did what I could to get down here. All, All right, right, that's so. great. It's, it's not naked, it's people not with clothes on. Okay. <laughs> it's a big difference. <laughs> okay. Oh, excuse I'm me. I'm sorry, I'm an artist. <laughs> 
I think Freddie's jealous again. Freddie. I don't drink. I don't swear. I don't even wrap my hair. I get ill for one cigarette. Ah, ah, ah. Look at me. I'm candlesy. Lousy <laughs> with virginity. I only get spanked and I don't like to wag. I can't. I'm candlesy. Make me an angel. Flies from Montgomery. Make me a scene. But just as. Trying to teach if you just played or jeopardizing my bigger plan. Now it's my time to shine. Cause I know I'm here. You know the drill. And if you don't, well, you will. Oh, you'll be sleeping good tonight. Out on air, all we got. Young movies and dirty socks. Truck stop boy, sure gets me hot. Also in 2009, in August, Barapalooza went to a new campground called Roy's Hideaway in South Georgia. So after having that show there, I actually ended up moving to Roy's and working there for a while. So in April of 2010, we decided that Barapalooza was going to have its first ever full-on weekend, uh, its own bear run at Roy's. The event had a theme of 80s Rewind. We had a number of different shows that weekend. One was an 80s cover show, and everyone dressed kind of crazy. Um, I remember very well Kendall coming out in his Boy George outfit, and Jay was dressed up as some kind of 80s hair rocker. And I had some crazy getup going on. I don't know what it was supposed to be. Um, Yolanda did some Annie Lennox songs in a lovely dress. Charlie donned his little Cindy Lauper wig. We had a great time jamming by the pool with Martin Swinger and Don Harvey. We also had a campfire jam that was a lot of fun with myself and Jay. Jeff Rock Cub, John Porco, Charlie. This show also had another one of those really great Bear Palooza Yolanda moments. Yolanda had forgotten to bring a wig. So, being resourceful, he took Spanish moss off of the trees and made a ginormous wig out of the Spanish moss. And it looked fantastic. And Kendall brought us his character, Miss Tinklebean, who was a very inappropriate teacher. Kendall and I had been working on a song for his album called So Good, and we realized it would be perfect for this event. So we made a little promo video. There's Eduardo. Roy with the boom box. And there's Jay as Prince. I love that. Later that year at Roy's, we had another event called Spirit of the Bear, which embodied a real tribal energy. I'll never forget Reverend Yolanda invoking the spirits and getting everyone's energy ready for this great event. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Spirit of the Bear! So I'm Yolanda, Reverend Yolanda for tonight in my robes, but we're going to do a, uh, an honoring of the Great Spirit. So with, come with me and let's honor the spirit of the air. Let's call in and honor the spirit of the earth. We will call in and honor the spirit of water and we call in and honor the spirit of fire. We thank you, oh Great Spirit for your blessings on this weekend. We thank you for good food. We thank you for good sex. We thank you for great, great brotherhood. And we thank you for wonderful music. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Hi, I have a trick coming by. 
Oh, you have a train so, coming by. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you can do that for me, I don't know how he summons that up. But. Blessings on Kendall's good sex. And everybody said, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Never spent a day in school. Hands smelled just like diesel fuel. That boy's got my favorite tool. When I'm here, I'm queer, and I'm good. Barapalooza puts on a carnal carnival, expresses its love for bacon, and embarks on a tour of the South, leading up to a performance at the largest bear run in the country. We started out 2011 with Barapalooza Carnal Carnival at Roy's Hideaway. It was a really big show with a lot of performers, and one of the special things that happened was Jay designed some incredible posters for that event where he turned each participant into um, a vintage freak show. This was one of our bigger lineups and it included so many people. Don Harvey, Michael West, myself, Yolanda, Kendall, Jeff Rockcub, John Porco, Xavier Shadow Dancer, Eric Waldo. There were so many people at that show and it was a really big extravaganza. And uh, Roy's had just built a new clubhouse, and we uh, kind of broke it in, even though it wasn't completely done. 2011 was also our third year at one of our favorite bear runs to play, called Midwest Bear Fest. It takes place in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's put on by the Midwest Bear Pack. It's probably our favorite run because it just has a really family vibe to it. It's a mid-sized run, so it's very exciting. They book out the whole hotel with bears, but it's small enough that every year feels like a reunion. And we always have really fun shows there and do a lot of fun stuff. Do you know how sexy Jay is? <laughs> Working out. This is hip hop artist Bone and Tell. He actually joined us as a newcomer in 2010 at a show in Boston. And he's been a really big part of the family ever since, doing a lot of shows with us. And I really love that he brings a different sensibility in a genre that's usually underrepresented to Bear Palooza. He's going to beat me later. No, it's every time. Every time we do this We're selling tickets. Watch you save my life with a song. But you won't mind. Live in a city filled with millions of people. This was also the year of the great bacon shortage. Next year, I'm having a bacon party next year here, okay? But this is what I'm doing. I am, we're recording a song together. You're going to help us. And we're going to sell that on iTunes and use the profits <laughs> for next year to ensure that we have enough bacon for the weekend. And to sponsor the bacon party. Yeah. A little bit slower, just a little bit slower. We want emotion. Emotion. It's bacon. Emotion. <laughs> okay. We are the bears. We love our bacon. We love our bacon. You call it breakfast, but without it, you are really bacon. There's a choice you make. You're pissing off the bears. It's true, we like to eat so feed us. It's true, we like to eat, so feed us. Please, please, bitch, I'm serious. <laughs> if you can. 
So at the start of 2012, Kendall got us an opportunity to perform at a retreat center in upstate New York called Easton Mountain. And when we got there, I realized that this wasn't going to be just another performance because I was being asked to facilitate a discussion on what is a bear. And I was also being given an opportunity to lead a Sunday music service, which is something I wanted to do. So Easton became a big part of my life, so much so that I now live there as part of the community with Jay. And we are very involved with their programming, and I work at the front desk. And that bear event is going to be expanded this year. We're calling it Bear Your Soul. And it's going to be billed as a different kind of bear run that addresses bears in a much more holistic way, body, mind, and spirit. So that was very exciting. After the show at Easton, we did a show in my hometown of Saratoga Springs, and then we hit New York City, and we played at the Rock Bar, which used to be the Dugout, and that was a wonderful show. Again, this is another one of those stories where the show almost didn't happen, because... The annual Bear of Palooza Curse. Tommy's flight got messed up, and he couldn't make it, and Don was so sick in New Jersey that he had to go to an urgent care place and could not make it. So um, Max and Jay and I ended up being a three-piece band, and we pulled the show off, and we had a great time. After that, I was invited to bring a bunch of the guys to the largest bear run in the country called Texas Bear Roundup. And since I had a date booked with Sawmill a week before that, some of us made a southern tour out of it. At that sawmill gig was a newcomer that we had met the year before in Atlanta named Sean Cagallis. I first got involved in Barapalooza when I got a message from my friend Lucas Mire, and he said that this guy Freddie Freeman was looking for people to be extras in a music video for the song Bear World. Yeah, you know, I said, sure, why not? And uh, they said, you might get to play a couple songs too, and I said, that'd be cool. And we went down, and it was a really fun time. After the shoot, I played a couple songs, and uh, Freddie and Jay and Charlie were there, and I met them, and they uh, enjoyed what I did, and I enjoyed what they did, and then it was only maybe four months later, five months later, I got a call from Freddie asking if I wanted to be a part of the gang at the uh, TBRU 19, no, 17, yeah, 17. 2012 bear run in Dallas. We ended up making a whole tour out of uh, that date and uh, a date at Sawmill and uh, we strung some gigs in between Florida and Texas and it turned out to be uh, really the, the best tour that I've been on. I mean I haven't been on a lot of tours but I've been on my share and uh, this one definitely overall was A+. plus. And at Sawmill that year was the first time that I met the guys from Bears on the Coast, Michael and Dustin, and they did a wonderful interview with everyone. Well, I roll right, yeah. I shoot you straight, even the left wing homosexual who meditates. At a bear event in Charlotte, North Carolina, I met Xavier Shadow Dancer, who is a bear belly dancer. And he joined us at Sawmill. This was his second time with us. And I include a bear belly dancer because I think that's the perfect way to show that larger men can be proud of themselves. His art form is fantastic. And he's just mesmerizing every time he's on stage. I never really thought about becoming a part of it until the second Bear Palooza event that I went to and I saw Freddie again and they were just you just doing their little drumming around the campfire, you know, no performancing or anything. But of course, where there's drummers, a belly dancer will be dancing. So luckily I brought some of my belly dance stuff and I was belly dancing around the fires, playing my finger stills and and he saw me do that and he just fell in love with the energy that is belly dance and of course my energy. And then that's when Freddie Friedman um, asked me to be a part of the Bear Palooza. Um, roster of artists. Yeah, fashion sucks, but 
So after Sawmill, Sean and Jay and I got in the car and we went up to Jacksonville and met up with John Porco and did a gig at the Boot Rack, which was one of my favorite places to play. And then we got in the car and we left John behind and we headed, the three of us, down to New Orleans where we played at the Phoenix Bar, which is owned by Clint Taylor. Some of you may know him from Bear Films. He's a real sweetheart. And we had a great time. It was my first time in New Orleans and it's a place I've always wanted to go. And we just enjoyed the city so very much. I've been here on the, in the French Quarter for about 15 minutes now, maybe 20 minutes. And I'm already feeling that vibe. There's voodoo stuff everywhere. There's like jazz. It's just a really interesting atmosphere. It's a really cool mixture of cultures. It's awesome. And this is my first time being here since Katrina. And all I have to say is that I feel a lot more at ease because we're here in March and not <laughs> August. So. I don't know, I'm feeling the wind. Ready. Ready to make good memories. Clint really went out of his way to accommodate us. Um, he put us up in a little apartment of his, right above the bar. And the night of the show, he transformed the pool table into a stage. That was a really fun show in New Orleans. Then we headed into Houston, where we played Tony's Corner Pocket. And we got to stay with one of my heroes, Mr. J.D. Doyle who is um, a historian of queer music and a radio DJ and an all-around great guy. And while staying with JD, we got to see his archives, his massive collection of any gay and lesbian recording that's out there, and it was quite impressive to see. And the recordings all alphabetically, uh, you know, arranged and uh, put out there, and uh, all sorts of artists. And there's a very own Freddie Freeman hanging out in the library. Sean, this, this collection is so extensive that J.D. has recordings of mine that I don't even have. No, nope. and I'm sure he has a lot of stuff that a lot of artists have no idea that's out there. J.D. also had us live on his radio show that Monday. Um, it's called Queer Voices, and it's on KPFT in Houston. What is Barapalooza? Well, it's a collective of um, different individual artists who identify as bears we have shows all over the country and you know um there might be like five or six acts at a show and it showcases the talent in the community the show we did at tony's corner pocket in houston started out kind of weird but it really ended up being a really cool thing um i don't think that the regular patrons really were expecting this kind of thing there that afternoon like people were asking us what are you guys doing you're playing music what what is this it felt like we we're kind of disrupting their normal sunday afternoon routine but you know what we won them over because after the show was over those very same people were coming up to us telling us how much they enjoyed it and telling us how much they appreciated it so that was a really cool thing so then jay and sean and i headed to dallas texas for the big texas bear roundup now this is the biggest bear run in the country, and it's the biggest event we'd ever been asked to do. But it was a massive undertaking because there were three different performances during this weekend that we had to do. A big time crunch, a lot of coordinating people and equipment. Nerves were frayed at some points. There was even a big fight. Kendall and I got in a huge fight, but we're all better now, thank you. Um, and I just, I was blown away by everything that happened at this event especially the generosity of the dallas bears and especially bobby who was the guy coordinating us i mean he gave us a suite to practice in and gave us all whatever we wanted to drink and they were they were just so accommodating and so wonderful and it was an incredible experience probably not very easy to put together because you know have you, have you ever tried to get you know six to eight gay men to all work on the same schedule <laughs> Thank you. 
so for the last decade, my life has revolved around Bearpalooza. It's been everything to me. It's been my identity as a musician and as a gay man. It's meant the world to me. It's brought me so many new friendships. It's brought me hard lessons and losses. And it's it's just been everything to me. So I want to thank all of the musicians who've been part of it and and everyone who supported it for 10 years. And I thought we really need to celebrate this in a big way. It's been 10 years. So I thought, why not go back to the place where it all started in New York City? And I began to put together the 10-year anniversary celebration, which would be a two-day event. And since Jay and I were moving to New York State and we could get legally married, since Bearpalooza has been such a big part of our life, we thought, why not have Reverend Yolanda marry us at the 10th-year anniversary? So we began to put all that together, um, got to the hard work of doing all the planning and coordinating. Hurricane Sandy threatening to blast millions of Americans with rain, snow, and wicked winds. It's an unprecedented superstorm in the offing, and if it happens, it could last for days. Tomorrow, Sandy is off the curb. especially after another incident that happened the following year. That was the beginning of what I came to refer to as the annual Bearpalooza freakout, uh, which was, uh, you know, a last minute panic right before the show of, you know, oh, what's happening? Something's gone wrong. We gotta, we gotta fix it. We gotta deal with it. Uh, the thing was, it always got fixed. It always got dealt with. And the show happened. Like Robert said, the show went on. And that's been the biggest lesson of doing Bearpalooza for the last 10 years, is that even in the face of adversity and hard times, this wonderful group of men were always able to come together and make it happen in the name of music and in the name of brotherhood. Big Daddy! 